In all convolutional networks, there are a few layers whose function is to pull information. These layers are called pooling layers and are present in architecture such as the VGG depicted in this image. In this particular network, a type of pooling layer was used called max pooling, which is one of many sorts of pooling available when architecting a network. You might be wondering, why do we even need to do pooling in the first place for a CNN? In this tutorial, we'll answer this question by exploring the three ways in which pooling is helpful for training deep vision model. The three main answers to this question will explore the following. Pooling help with dimensionality reduction throughout the network. It allows the network to have translational invariance. And finally, it allowed the deep learning architect to make some very useful change at the end of a CNN. First, let's take a look at what is the pooling operation and what are the main forms it takes. First, the definition. Pooling involves iterating over an input layer, like the one depicted on the left, and pulling that information to a smaller output layer using some sort of filtering criterion. Usually, it is done on a 2x2 two two window with a stride of 2. One popular way to do this filtering operation is using max pooling. The operation is simple. In each 2x2 two two square, you take the maximum value and then you store it in the next layer. The main benefit of max pooling are that it is resistant to background noise and it retains the dominant features. Two important aspects for object detection. All benefit have their downside though. Max pooling is very sensitive to outliers and can lead to loss of fine grain information. Whenever the image has more subtle feature, it might be more useful to use average pooling. The operation is also straightforward. We take the average value in each of the 2x2 square and store the result in the output layer. This pooling operation is robust to outliers and preserves spatial information better. The downside are that average pooling has more difficulty capturing salient features and that there's a reduction in discrimination between feature maps in all the feature filters caused by the averaging operation. Okay, let's illustrate a bit more what the pooling operation is actually doing throughout the network. This beautiful visualization was taken from the paper Visual Complexity Analysis using deep intermediate layer features. I have put the link into the description. In the first max pooling layer, we recognize some sudden feature from the trim we car here that we have. After the second convolution block, we can still recognize some of feature of the trim we car, but the focus seems to be mainly on the car and on the background tree. Notice that the image is halved compared to the last layer. As we go down to the third max pooling layer, we start to see how compact the representation is starting to become, and there's also less salience on the background. In the fourth max pooling layer, the image that we're creating from the feature filter is getting pretty small and there seems to be more salience, but it's harder to interpret the image. In the final max pooling layer, this has become impossible for us to interpret as the feature are very high level, yet the representation is very compact now. There are other kinds of pooling operations aside from average and maximum pooling, like the fractional max pooling. It's like max pooling, but you can do it with fractional division not necessarily as an integer like 2 or 4. We have adaptive max pooling, which automatically works out how to do the right pooling operation based on the target output size. And you have the same thing for the average operation instead. You also have the power average pooling, which is a general form of pooling that lives on a spectrum from some pooling to max pooling. Finally, we even got the min pooling that works like max pooling, but for the minimum value instead. Okay. So back to our original question, why do we even need pooling? And the first answer to this is to apply dimensional reduction throughout the network. Let's take, for example, this fairly deep network called InceptionNet, the first version of it. As you can see on the left, we have the many layers and we see that we have a sort of high dimensionality problem to take care of. In a convolutional network, the early layers serve the purpose of extracting simple features that resemble the type of feature seen in an early layer of an organic visual cortex. And in this case, we can see here in the first filters, we have edge detection, other building block feature that are being uh, automatically created by the network. In later layers, however, the network makes a combination of previous features to respond to very specific type of stimuli. For instance, like in area IT of the prime brain, you can get layers that re react to specific type of faces. Therefore, the number of filter has to go up to combine lower level feature together to make a more complex one. 
this is defined by the number that goes from 64 to 1000 on the uh, table on the left. These numbers need to somewhat keep increasing to properly handle as much as possible the number of permutation. But if this number has to go up, the other dimension should go down to keep the complexity in check. We can use parameter free pooling operation like max pooling here, which introduce a prior for a certain type of information we want to capture more accurately. Visually, it look like this in terms of dimension reduction. We go from first image that is half somewhat, and then we have the max pooling that goes 112 to 56, and then to 28, to 14, and then to seven. Like we have here uh, two by two with a stride of two. You can appreciate also how much the number of filter increased throughout this visualization while the height and width decrease. This motion of doing the pulling operation keeps the volume of information that we have to, to uh, manipulate roughly in check. If you have been following here, you might realize that we could have used a convolution operation instead of a pulling layer. You will just need to set up the stride uh, to two and we should be good to go. This is usually used in the first convolution layers close to the input and reduce the width and height of the output. However, this required the network to have extra learnable parameters, which might not be ideal, and do not help us for the second benefit of pooling operation, which is introducing translational invariance capability in the network. This shouldn't be confused though with the translational equivariance, which is already provided by the convolution operations. In object detection, this translational invariance property is pretty important as the task is to take an image as an input and return a label. Invariance to translation means that if we translate the input by a small amount, the value of most of the pool output does not change. And this definition comes from the deep learning book. The target behavior for a network is to detect the object irrespective of the location in the image. So having the same behavior internally in the network irrespective of small translation is pretty important. For instance, if we illustrate this visually, with this image of a woman doing yoga, we have the image of the woman on the left and the label yoga on the right that need to be outputted. In between, we want our trained neural network to pick up on the woman features and register that as the yoga woman label. If we shift slightly all the pixel of the woman to the left, then we should at least still be categorizing this as a woman doing yoga. But even more so, we should expect the feature that are activating the network to stay roughly the same. This is what pooling is able to bring to the network, the translational invariance capability. Other type of invariance can be obtained through other means, but the translational one is easy to bring into the network with the pooling layers. And the last answer to the question of why we need pooling is for specific architectural change. So usually when you have a fully connected layer at the end of a CNN, you need to take all of your feature maps and then flatten them up to feed them to the last bit of the network, which is the fully connected layers. This put the convolutional part of the network as a kind of feature extractor of sort and the fully connected part as the actual classifier. You can use another type of pooling, which is called global average pooling, that allow you to take each feature map and output one number for each of, of them to a softmax function directly. This allow the convolutional learn network to change the architecture to reject a need for a fully connected layers at the end and instead use convolution all the way throughout. Another added benefit of the global average pooling layer is that there are no parameter to learn here. This was first introduced in the network and network architecture, which was performing 1% better on some task with that pooling operation than with a fully connected layer. You can check out my breakdown video of this network as it has a very few interesting novelty like the one-on-one -on -one convolution and the global average pooling. And that's it. That's the three main reasons why pooling is so useful in convolutional neural networks. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to like the video if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. I'm here to help. Have a great week everyone and see you in the next video.